Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to be building ourselves the centerpiece of the museum hall, the dragon skeleton. We're going to be building a giant skeletal model of the ender dragon. But first, I'm back over here at Founders Forge at my villager to zombie converter because today... Oh, there's a minecart in the way. I should probably get rid of that before that zombie comes back around. Yes, today we're actually going to be working on getting a little bit of quartz for that first. And for that, I decided to enlist the help of some stonemasons. Stonemasons are an occupation I haven't really considered all that much in the series so far, but they are actually really useful as a source of quartz. Now, we can, of course, get quartz items, the nether quartz or the stuff that you would get out of mining nether quartz in the nether yourself from piglin bartering, but stonemasons will be able to trade you one block of quartz for one emerald, and sometimes the deals even include things like pillar quartz, which could be really useful to have in great supply. And so rather than waste all of the quartz that we get from piglins on all of this, I figured we could just do a little bit of quick villager trading with a new stonemason and get ourselves a nice supply of quartz nice and easily. So I'm gonna just zombify this guy and hopefully he should give us some good trades once he's through with that process and I just throw down a stone cutter in front of him and let him do his thing. Oh look at that, four clay balls for an emerald or an emerald for ten bricks. Well this is actually gonna be really great to have a supply of bricks as well so I might as well buy up some of those. Ten emeralds will get me a decent amount which then gives me 25 brick blocks and this is why these guys are so powerful because otherwise I would have to go out and collect clay blocks for that. So we'll grab one of those, we can buy some chiseled stone brick or even trade him some smooth stone for emeralds and I don't plan on using too many of the trades where you sell materials to this guy but I will definitely buy myself some of that with the emeralds that I've scraped together from some other trades so let me just go and grab a few of those and hopefully we can get to the good stuff hopping on in and buying some chiseled stone bricks it should unlock the next tier of trade yep there we go and now he's selling us polished andesite and polished granite well isn't that fascinating I think I'm probably going to buy a few polished andesite but I have plenty of andesite in my storage building so I'm not really interested in taking advantage of that trade. The expert trade gets us oh a couple of terracotta colors. That's interesting and if we got a whole bunch of masons together we could potentially get the full range of terracotta colors which is something that I might do in future. I like the light blue out of these. I think I'll take a little bit of the light blue. Not too much once again kind of in it for those final tier trades. There we go. Quartz pillar and blocks of quartz. One per emerald and I will definitely be taking full advantage of both of those actually because then I should be able to smelt the quartz blocks into smooth quartz which is what we're going to use primarily for the dragon skeleton but I think some of the quartz pillar will come in useful as well. Not to mention the fact that the stone cutter in front of the stonemason can be used to make chiseled quartz, quartz bricks, quartz pillar, slabs, and stairs. And the new quartz brick blocks are actually quite nice. I'm going to make a few of these just as an example here, although I don't think we will use any of these for the dragon skeleton. But these are a new block for the nether update for Minecraft 1.16. And there's actually kind of a nice texture to these. They've got a different layout to the stone brick texture. There are smaller bricks kind of constantly through that bottom row instead of them being offset versions of the top half bricks so I think those are quite nice if we wanted to build something kind of palatial out of quartz that would probably be a good call but for now I'm just going to shelve those trade a little bit more with this guy overnight probably install him in the main body of the trading hall here so that we can make sure we can come back and trade with him anytime we want to maybe recruit a few more stonemasons and we will get to trading a mammoth amount of quartz because this is going to be quite a large build. Okay, welcome back to the museum, and I've brought a few supplies with me. We got ourselves a lot of quartz in here. That should hopefully be enough to build the model dragon skeleton that I have planned. It's going to be pretty large, let's face it. And I also have a few supplies here for what I think is going to be kind of a nice centerpiece for this room. We are going to create a kind of end diorama using these supplies. The basalt and the glass and some of the black concrete powder here is going to be for something very specific which I'll explain a little later. And the chains here are going to be hanging the dragon from the ceiling because I don't want to just have this thing floating in midair. I want to feel like it's something that's been suspended on wires. And once you can place chains horizontally in the 116.2 update, we might even have skeletons that we can like wire together using chains, which might be a kind of fun idea. But 
Anyway, let's take a look at what we've got in here because all of this has been traded from my stonemasons, including the quartz bricks that I left in there even though I can't really... I think maybe I could use a stone cutter to change those back now, thinking about it. Let's find an ender chest. I think I brought one with me. There we go. Let's dip into our village box one more time and let's see if the stone cutter can turn these quartz bricks back into anything. Doesn't look like they can. If you can't shift click something into the GUI, means you can't really use it, unfortunate, but we can get around that a little bit later using the same tricks as we are using with the quartz pillar, because I don't plan on using all of this quartz pillar for the dragon skeleton, but I have created quite a lot of it, and like the bricks, we can't put those in the stone cutter either. Instead, what we can do, where is a crafting table? Seriously, how do I get anything done in this series? Do I have a crafting table in one of these somewhere? Here we go, I've left it over here by my other stone cutter. <laughs> Forget my own head if it wasn't screwed on properly. Anyway, let's uh, open up the crafting interface here because with quartz pillars, and I believe quartz bricks as well, you can create quartz slabs, although apparently not with a combination of the two. Interesting. But three quartz pillars in a row like this makes some regular quartz slabs, and those will build up into normal quartz blocks if you want to use them that way or you can continue to use them just as regular quartz slabs. Now those, those do have the bevel around the edge of course and unfortunately we cannot do anything to turn those into smooth quartz slabs. We can't even smelt them in a furnace and we can't smelt quartz pillars to turn those into smooth quartz either because that is what we're going to be building the majority of this skeleton out of. We're going to be using all of these blocks of quartz, the regular blocks of quartz, not the quartz pillar or the quartz brick and we're going to be using those in smooth form after we smelt them here in these furnaces. So a few buckets of lava can go in with each of those. Unfortunately, we can't do this in a blast furnace or a smoker, so the process is going to be a little slow. But here we go. We get some smooth quartz, and the difference between smooth and regular quartz will be apparent when I put these two side by side with some regular blocks of quartz. And you will be able to see there, there is a white line around the outside of that, which doesn't look all that noticeable at first glance, but then when you tile a bunch of them together, there's a very definite shadow between each of these blocks, and that is what I want to avoid doing with this skeleton. We want to make it feel like a single solid piece of bone, or at least something that is meant to represent a single solid piece of bone, as though it's been carved from the same piece of marble or something like that. And so by using smooth quartz for this, we're going to achieve quite an organic feel to the build because it's all going to be made out of the same contiguous piece of material. Not only that, but with smooth quartz, we can't make that out of regular quartz in a stone cutter, but we can make smooth quartz slabs, which will be used along the same lines to provide a kind of continuous structure to this whole thing. And obviously the right angle between these blocks is going to be noticeable, but it's still going to have that nice smooth texture that is a little bit interrupted by the fact that the quartz slab has this bevel pixel border around the outside. So I think this is going to come together really nicely once we've got enough smooth quartz to start the skeleton. In the meantime, while all of that is cooking up in the furnaces over there, I have found the center point of our exhibition hall here, the central hall that's going to be like basically the first thing you see when you come in through the doors of the museum. And using the basalt here, we're actually going to build up a facsimile of the end return portal, the bedrock portal at the center of the end island. And using the supplies I've got here, we're going to surround this with end stone. And it's all going to be raised up one block from the floor, which is going to be made probably out of dark oak planks to begin with. And then we might add some more detail to the floor a little bit later when we really want areas of it to stand out. But the idea here is that the entire floor is going to be made out of solid dark oak planks, and then we're going to have an end stone structure around the outside of here, making it look like the end island has been brought into the overworld in a kind of diorama form. It's just going to be one layer thick, there's not going to be a huge amount of changes in elevation, and unfortunately we can't make any end stone slabs, so we're just going to have to make do with the full block of end stone and maybe do some lighting here to make sure it doesn't end up spawning any mobs. We'll conceal the lighting a little bit though to make sure it looks kind of nice and in the center here is going to be a bedrock portal made out of polished basalt. Why polished basalt you might be wondering? Well I took a look at the texture of some of these blocks and realized that polished basalt was probably the closest thing I was going to get to a block that has the amount of contrast and kind of streakiness as bedrock without acquiring bedrock itself, which is apparently possible to do in survival Minecraft through various glitches, but I really didn't want to get involved with that stuff. I wanted the museum to feel like they had put together 
a kind of artificial version of the portal. I'm thinking a little bit more in-world, in the kind of fiction of the world with this one, and I figured that people wouldn't go to the immense trouble of actually acquiring bedrock for something like this, because bedrock is supposed to be unbreakable. We're kind of playing within the rules of Minecraft, even if those rules can occasionally be bent and broken once or twice. So to create the illusion that this is the end return portal, I actually want to do something a little different with the inside of this, and it's not going to look exactly like the end return portal, of course, because that has the kind of fun parallax scrolling effect that you get from looking down into those end portal, the kind of uh, <laughs> the same thing as happens with the actual end portal when you've got that kind of star field in the center there. That is present in the regular end return portal, and we can't reproduce that effect in the overworld because we can't acquire those portal blocks. But instead, what we can do is create a kind of fog effect using layers of purple and gray stained glass in the same way we've done in the ravine in Founder's Forge. And I'm going to line the outside of the portal here with black concrete powder to kind of give that star field effect to the background of the portal and below this we're going to have layer upon layer of purple and gray stained glass giving that kind of end fog effect. So I've dug this pit five blocks deep, covered the floor with black concrete. We're actually going to put a torch down here. I might swap this out for another light emitting block, maybe an end rod or something even later on. But then we're going to open up the shulker box and cover this section here in alternating layers of gray and purple glass. <laughs> the pillagers have decided to make an appearance once again. I swear these guys never leave me alone. But here we are anyway. This is the effect you get from the portal. And the top is completely grey glass, which actually looks kind of transparent compared to the bedrock, uh, the, the basalt around the outside that is meant to imitate bedrock. And so you can walk out over it and it does sort of feel like you could just fall in at any moment. And obviously the effect of the glass is noticeable to anybody who is observing that. And it doesn't look exactly like the end portal, but I like the overall effect and it suits the end stone around it pretty well. Purple and end stone has always been a great combination. And you might have guessed it already, but atop this pedestal here, which I'm not sure if I want it to be that high or like a little bit lower, is where we're going to put the dragon egg. And that is going to be the permanent home of the dragon egg in this world. It is going to reside in the museum for the foreseeable future because I have no real plans for the dragon egg and it'd be nice to finally have some place to put it to rest as long as these pillagers don't come along and shoot it with an arrow and cause it to teleport away. Okay, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. I have managed to get a little bit more of the floor laid out here before we start building the dragon skeleton, and we have been visited by not one, not two, but three pillager patrols. And it may just be because I haven't been running away or flying up into the air to despawn them. I certainly haven't been fighting them. Can you believe this? I feel like pillagers are the, <laughs> the most guests at the museum so far, which is... Kind of ridiculous to tell you the truth. By the way, I have actually done a little thing over here where I decided I wasn't going to completely close off the room that had the end portal in it. So we've got this glass floor here now with a kind of viewing window down into the end portal room, which also means I don't have to light it up and worry about mobs walking into the portal and <laughs> suddenly being like a jump scare for me when I go through to the end next time. But seriously, Look at all these guys. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to name tag them right now and keep them for the museum, but I imagine a few more will show up later on, so I'm not really going to worry about that right now. Instead, if these gentlemen want to leave me to my business, I've got a floor to build. Okay, we finally got the floor done, and this place is looking a little bit more like a room now. Of course, as I said, we will do a little bit more to make the floor look a little special. We're going to put some more detail into this, of course. Are you serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> These guys just don't know when to quit, do they? Anyway, we are going to make the floor look a little bit more special, but I think first we want to focus on the big centerpiece of the room, which is going to be the dragon skeleton. And basically the way I want to look at this as far as the tutorial aspect of the video goes is as a kind of crash course in how to work with slightly more organic shapes. We're kind of designing a creature here, even if it is a creature skeleton, and also something that we have lots of reference for already because the ender dragon is a very iconic bit of minecraft so the first thing i will recommend doing if you're trying to reproduce a an existing creature is to take reference images and even though you may have fought the ender dragon a bunch of times you might be forgetting certain aspects of the dragon's design for a start 
I always kind of forget that the Ender Dragon's tail just sort of stops. It kind of comes to an end in a very boxy looking way that I think I might want to take some creative liberties with. The other thing I want to take creative liberties with is the fact that the Ender Dragon has feet. I'm not certain I really want to do anything with that because it kind of feels cooler to me if the Ender Dragon is just swooping overhead, wings extended, and the feet aren't really part of that design. So maybe maybe in the fiction of this world, the museum doesn't quite know what the Ender Dragon looks like and is going kind of on hearsay or something. I don't know. But the idea is that we are going to be taking a couple of creative liberties with the dragon here and we're not going to worry too much about exacting accuracy. The other thing I am going to recommend doing before you even get started in survival is a little bit of drafting in creative mode. And I have done just that. Over here, my camera account is logged into my creative testing world, which you can see is populated with a bunch of other projects that you might be familiar with from elsewhere in the series. And this is where I've gotten to with the dragon idea. And this is loosely based on the dragon skeleton I built in Decidedly Vanilla Season 3 for my museum project on that world. And you can see the overall design coming together here. I haven't completed it entirely, but I kind of know where I'm going with it. So I know enough about the way I'm going to design this that I'm happy enough to bring it over into the survival guide world and start building this. This is the dragon head, of course, that we know and love from the previous tutorial and with, of course, a little uh, a chest in there that's going to be full of lingering potions that's going to eventually feed into the lingering potion dispenser in the dragon's mouth once I have crafted a few more of those. So preparation is obviously going to be of the essence and I'm going to use a ton of scaffolding to set this project up because it's quite a wide project. We're going to be starting here in the center and we can make a little platform out of scaffolding so that we can for a start, build it from a certain height and have a height that we can return to whenever we want to get back up here and, and deal with anything else about the project. But we can also extend the platform out in several directions from here, which is going to allow me to build out a starter platform to work from. I want it to be low down enough that people can clearly see what it is. It's not like up by the ceiling when they walk in the door, but there's going to be a balcony around the rest of the room from which people can observe this skeleton from all different sides. And I think I think that height or maybe slightly higher might be best for that. Of course, from here, the process is going to be fairly straightforward. We're going to start the dragon's jaw about here like so, and that's going to be the same design that we built a few episodes ago when we were testing out the dispenser firing mechanism, which we're still going to have underneath the dragon's jaw here. So we got the dispenser installed in the bottom of the mouth here and two hoppers feeding into the dispenser. The chest is going to be back there and that's where the rest of the seriously the rest of the jaw starts and naturally this is going to be concealed with a couple of slabs there making the chest easy enough to reach and relatively obvious to anybody who is looking for it but it will be nice and concealed back here in the rest of the mouth making sure that people who are looking at this skeleton from the side probably won't see too much of the chest poking out there We'll pop up here to add the nostril flares and the ridge of the nose. We could even do some fun stuff with adding pillar quartz to there so that the nostril flares actually looked like nostrils on the end. So they had that circular texture, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Might get a little too cartoony at that stage. And then we'll come out either side with the cheeks and build up the rest of the shape of the head from here. Once again, we're going to give the dragon an angry expression where the eyebrow ridge kind of furrows in the middle like so, and we might fill the eye sockets with purple glass like I've done in creative if we want to give this kind of a feeling that the dragon is still a little alive in there. But this is all looking pretty good so far. I'll just pop down and take a look from the ground. Yeah, I think from the entrance perspective, where the main entrance would be over here, that's not too bad. We can probably shape out the bottom of the dragon's head here to conceal the two hoppers and the dispenser. I think I will still probably put a full block underneath the dispenser and have it activated by a button on the underside of the block. So if we do that right here and then maybe have a couple of slabs there. Is that going to make it look like the dragon has a bit of a bit of a beard going on? <laughs> I mean, we might have to do something about that design a little bit later, but for now, I think it's not terrible. Yeah, once again, a little bit of artistic license going on here. It sort of has the low-hanging beard of a, a Chinese-style dragon, maybe. We'll, uh, we'll go with that. And now we'll build up some more scaffolding around the outside because the next thing is going to be the neck poking out of the back of the head here. And this is sort of where the artistic license begins to creep back in because... 
the dragon's neck and the dragon's body are very different sizes, but I can imagine a lot of the body being like a rib cage and there being organs in there, I guess. And so what I want to do with the dragon's head and neck here is probably keep the neck throughout the structure the same sort of size, as though it's like a spinal cord, and then we're going to not worry too much about the body portion of it. So the dragon is going to look a little bit more serpentine, I guess, than the dragon actually looks when you fight it. And so for sections like this where the dragon's neck ridges up slightly, it actually has sort of spinal sections sticking out of the dragon's model. We are going to keep those made of quartz, even though they're a different colour on the original dragon model. I think it will work pretty well as is and once we get to about here we're actually roughly over the point where the dragon's egg is going to be sitting on top of our fake portal down there and that's where the wings are going to start and I think that's going to provide a really dramatic image of the wings basically spreading across the central axis of this room so the position of this whole thing is going to be pretty important to me as well. Another thing that's really important to do when you're building something big and organic like this is to stop every so often and take a look at the whole thing from a distance, like either build a scaffolding tower or if you've got the option to bring in a camera account, do that and take a look at what you've created. You can walk around a little bit on the scaffolding and check that you haven't missed off things or check that the whole thing looks like it's a good shape. And obviously right now we need to add some stuff underneath the neck there to make it look like it is supported. And I've also missed the horns that are kind of iconic in the dragon, the kind of uh, above the brow ridge, it's got a couple of horns sticking out that we will need to add here. And that's just gonna mean a block there, a block there, and slabs in front of them. Let's hover back down to the scaffolding platform and take a look at that from a distance. Yeah, that's looking a little bit more like the Ender Dragon now. <laughs> And once again, I have an audience. I'll stop mentioning the pillagers at this point. It's just kind of ridiculous how often they keep spawning. But now we got to the point where we can wireframe out the wings. And this is another really important thing of working with organic shapes is building up a wireframe first. And naturally, this being a skeleton, you're probably going to be working with a wireframe most of the time anyway. But it's kind of important to brush up on the shape of this thing before you go ahead and build out all of the other organic parts of it. So we're going to come out a few blocks here and yeah, I think it's probably going to extend out to about there before it starts moving upwards. The shape of this is going to be fairly straightforward because the dragon is quite a boxy creature, naturally being something from Minecraft, but it does need to have a little bit of curvature to the wings to give it a bit more dynamic shape. We don't want this thing to just be straight and flat. We want to make it look like it is swooping and about to flap its wings one more time. So I think we'll probably come along out here, go up one there, and then from this point on, we can start to map out the next segment of the wing because the wings are actually in kind of a segmented fashion. They are polygons that move around as the dragon flies. I'm also bringing the wings back a block each time I build out one of these segments to give it a bit more curvature that way as well. But since we are modeling this after the ender dragon, it's going to look a lot more blocky than the kind of dragons you see people building when they're really into fantasy style builds. And this last segment here out towards the wing tip is going to be the longest of all. And I think that will probably do, but we might want to increase the size of some of this a little bit later on if it doesn't look like it's quite in proportion with what we've already built for the head. I think this is looking not too bad though. We should be able to take a look at it from ground level once again and probably add a few more details to underneath here with the scaffolding towers so we can just pop underneath one of these wings and fill in the sections where it might deserve to be a little bit deeper and a little bit more detailed. So I'm pretty happy with the shape of this wing so far. The next thing I need to do is figure out exactly where the supporting bones for each wing are going to come out from. The Ender Dragon has kind of bat-like wings with these three almost claw-like protrusions that come out and support all of the, the canvas of the wings. I'm probably getting all of this terminology wrong. I'm not a biologist, but I think the first section comes out from here and is going to be at a, a diagonal, but not like a very strong diagonal. We're actually going to have it come out about there, and then it's going to come down one half block like that, so we end up coming out a little bit further like this, and we can add slabs underneath the structure of this afterwards to make sure it's a little bit thicker, a little bit better supported. But the idea here, of course, is that these wings are sweeping back, and they're, they're tilted slightly here and there, so that, once again, it gives the impression that the dragon is about to flap its wings and the whole model feels a lot more dynamic. So we'll put the slabs underneath there and transition back into full blocks for the next section which will start there. Let's end a pearl up to that. 
Which, as usual, I completely failed to do. I'm very bad with ender pearls. Anyway, let's continue making the rest of this section of the wing. Come out one more block. We don't quite want it to reach the body, so I think that is where we're going to leave it. But that is a nice kind of thick bone structure there that's going to continue the wing down that way. Next up, we want to come out another half block up from here another section of the wing starts there and this piece is going to come out basically straight from where it leaves the wing and at this point i think we probably want to once again transition to slabs just to taper the thing off a little bit and it'll only come a couple of blocks back from where this one ends over there once again we can adjust this afterwards if necessary a lot of the process of modeling stuff like this is going to be trial and error anyway the third section of the wing here is just going to come out at a diagonal once again and this one is going to come up by a slab any time that the one over there would go down by a slab. And once again, that's going to give the impression that the wing here is tilted. And from below, that's looking pretty good to me. Let's build up the scaffolding tower once again and see how it looks from above. Yeah, all right. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. It's going to look a lot better once we built a symmetrical wing on the opposite side and continued the dragon's body. But it does feel very centered in the room right now, which is precisely what I wanted. We wanted to make sure that this didn't feel like it was outgrowing the room a little bit. And while the dragon's body would be a lot larger than this, I think it's actually kind of fun just keeping the central spinal section intact and leaving the rest of the body to the imagination. Almost done with the tail section now. I need to continue those ridges along the back there. And once again, like I said, we are kind of taking liberties with how the dragon's tail looks because if this were the real ender dragon it would just kind of cut off about there without any of the tapering kind of quality it does shrink a little bit as it goes down the model of the dragon but for the most part it just kind of stops like a big boxy thing at the end and so i didn't really want to do that for this it felt a lot more dynamic a lot more interesting for the dragon to have like a more traditional dragon looking tail and i've enhanced the ridges on the top here a little bit more i did have them at half block heights using slabs but those didn't quite stand out enough when you were looking at the dragon from the floor whereas now you do actually start to see that line of them along the back there so i think that's going to work out pretty well all that remains to do is to copy the wing over to the opposite side, which I might bring the camera account into this world via the local area network so that I can get that one added in. And maybe, I don't know, maybe there's room for the feet in there. I just don't really feel like the feet fit my vision of what the dragon should look like. But maybe we'll try that if we feel so inclined. Yep, that's looking pretty great, I gotta say. I do think it needs legs, though. It does still feel like it's missing something, and the legs are obviously it. And while, of course, it does have legs, <laughs> because I hit the legs half the time when I fight the dragon, I run around the back and attack its hind legs. I don't really think of it as having four legs. I think that was the thing that was throwing me off slightly, was like, the front legs don't really do all that much in the context of it being the ender dragon like you don't tend to use them all that much it's a little bit like a t-rex it's got these wimpy little front arms to it but i think yeah we are going to need to put in a couple of legs at the front and towards the back here probably starting from about there just to make it feel like it could land and actually stand up as opposed to just being a snake with wings which is what it is right now now that i think about it it looks all the more ridiculous without them as for exactly where those legs belong they kind of start on the underside of the body just behind the wings so i think we'll probably bring one down from the side here i guess sort of there like I was saying, some of this is a little bit trial and error just to get the positioning right if you're not certain how to do it the first time. But with small details like this, not exactly a problem. There we go. That's looking all right for the four legs. And now the rear legs, the hind legs, are going to be a little bit thicker and beefier than those <laughs> weedy little ones it has at the front there. You know, it took me a few passes to get this right. And I still think the back legs do look a little bit strange. They look a little bit chunky just because of the fact that there isn't a larger body for them to hang from. But you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty great. Let's do the scaffolding climb one more time just to take a look at what that looks like from a higher angle. Yeah, that's nice. That's looking pretty good, actually. I do think the legs, while they do look a little bit silly, are a necessary addition to really complete the image that this is a skeletal version of the ender dragon and yeah i think we can probably work on suspending it from the ceiling using chains and fences a couple of walls that kind of stuff just to make it really feel like it is hanging there 
intentionally as opposed to just floating, defying physics above this central portal. And that is looking better than ever. I'm actually really happy with the arc that the ceiling takes, so we'll probably end up using that when we come to put together the rest of this room. And boy, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> it really is, but... I love this so far. I think it's turned out very, very well. You can just about see the chest in the dragon's mouth from this angle, but from the floor, you cannot. And what an impression it makes from the floor. Coming in through the central doorway and seeing this hanging above you is definitely the effect I wanted to go for, and I feel like we have definitely earned our way to it. I like the chains a lot as well. These are the new chain blocks for 1.16, and I really like what they add to this. Previously, I think I had it suspended using glass panes or uh, even just like, you know, fences looking like ropes, that kind of thing. But I think the chains really add something a little special. Exactly how we are going to light up this entire thing remains to be seen. But what I think I might end up doing is maybe using the chains even more to dangle lanterns from the ceiling or have some sort of suspended light source that's going to be above the top of this thing, making it feel as though the dragon is gliding through a star field. We could use end rods even for stuff like that and have the illumination just floating around the outside. Or I've seen some people do really great tricks with floating flower pots with lanterns hung underneath that make them feel a little bit like Chinese paper lanterns. And I think those would look fantastic as well. But as it is, I've just created this gentle sweeping arc for the ceiling and attached each of the chains to it via a couple of polished black stone walls and some dark oak fences. And the dark oak, I think, really works for a bit of light and dark contrast here, especially when it comes to the dragon skeleton, but also when it comes to the endstone podium we have here for the dragon egg altar, the bedrock portal, or the basalt portal, I guess it is now. And I will put the dragon egg on there, but I'm probably going to save that for a time when we can declare this particular room done. It feels like the kind of ceremonial icing on the cake at that point. So I think that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope this episode has been inspiring to you. If you feel like creating your own organic looking builds, your creature builds in Minecraft, this might be a good starting point. But thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixariffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.